Hi right, guys. Well, I guess it's, uh, I hope it's going to turn into a beautiful moonlit spring evening here in the collapse of everything in Doomsday Trailer uh, on this lovely Monday night, March 25th, 2024. So, of course, Monday is, uh, it, I don't know, if is it the easiest or hardest rant of the week where I bring you our good news round up uh, <coughs> our Monday good news round up uh, so uh, we're to start now of course we're gonna start this is uh, obviously how the mainstream media spouts good news this is Reuters news US economy on solid ground as weekly jobless claims fall and home sales surge. Yes. All right. The number of Americans filing new claims for unemployment benefits unexpectedly fell last week, while sales of previously owned homes increased by the most in a year in February. Signs the economy remains on solid footing in the first quarter. Yes. Uh. <laughs> the United States continues to outshine its global peers thanks to labor market resilience, blah, blah, blah. And then right next to that story, also from Reuters News, U.S. new home sales fall, median price lowest in more than two and a half years. Yes. Sales of new U.S. single-family homes unexpectedly fell in February <coughs> after mortgage rates increased during the month, but the underlying trend remains strong amid a chronic shortage of previously owned houses on the market. So you got to read these two stories very carefully right up next to each other that the previously owned homes went up, the new homes went down, but don't worry, even that uh, little blip, don't worry that New home sales did slip by 0.3 last month, but they are still up 5.9% year on year. It is a good uh, time to be a real estate investor. Now, this next one from the Telegraph. Uh, the Telegraph, of course, is... Uh, is is England's, uh, basically England's print version of Fox News. It's their right wing, <clears throat> you know, pro Donald Trump rag over there. Uh, although this one is sounding some good news about the United States. Well, I've mentioned this story before, but the Telegraph is a little, uh, is still celebrating it. The USA is now producing more oil and gas than any nation ever has. It's a triumph. <coughs> yes, this is a picture of triumph. That is what uh, a picture of triumph looks like. Uh-huh. All right, you've heard it before and you're hearing it again. The U.S. Energy and Information Administration said in January, as I reported, that U.S. domestic production of crude oil for September set a new all-time high of 13,247,000 barrels per day. That fact probably deserved more notice than it received, given it that it was the most oil any nation on earth had ever managed to produce in a single month. 
Even more remarkable is the fact that U.S. producers managed to break the record in November and then exceed the September number again in December, the most current month for which full data is available. It is likely November's all-time record of 13,319,000 barrels per day has been exceeded at least once again during the first quarter of 2024 as producers find ways to wring more production out of each well bore. Hallelujah! You go USA! You go Joe Biden! Joe Biden uh, being of course the, the president who can now brag that under his administration the United States has produced hands down the most oil and gas of any country in the history of the planet under his watch more oil and gas than Donald Trump or George Bush ever could have dreamed of. And this is a triumph according to the mainstream media. But of course, the real good news, and as I mentioned, uh, this is going to be a, a recurring theme in the uh, good news uh, round up a bunch of uh, a, a, a bunch of stories uh, on this. Uh, I'm just gonna read two that sound pretty similar. This is UPI, United Press International. Fertility rates expected to fall worldwide, pushing population down. Halla fucking Luya. By 2050, three quarters of the world's nations will see their fertility rates fall to below replacement levels, meaning their populations will be steadily shrinking. And as the Telegraph, uh, which I'm not including in here, talking about, they talking, their headline was, a population explosion building in sub-Saharan Africa and what the Telegraph, uh, you know, the right-wingers that I just mentioned were talking about that, that, that all of these other stories are unadulterated horseshit because they are, they are not looking at immigrants. They are not looking at sub-Saharan Africans getting their black asses to Honkyville over there in Europe and all the little brown ones coming up here. Uh, so when you add in immigration, uh, every country is going to keep rising uh, because of these brooder hens in sub-Saharan Africa. But uh, we're just going to, we're not going to talk about that little inconvenient truth exactly. Moving on with UPI's story. And by 2100, almost all countries, 97% are expected to have fertility rates below the replacement level of 2.1 children per woman. This trend will not happen everywhere all at once. Richer countries will be hit first and hardest by falling birth rates, uh, meaning that they are going to have huge influxes of, of migrants from the poorer nations maintaining their higher birth rates. <clears throat> that all this is according uh, to researchers at the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the Washington School of Medicine in Seattle. <clears throat> all of this means big shifts in where the world's babies are being born. According to the report, 29% 
of babies on this planet were born in sub-Saharan Africa in 2021, but by 2100, over half, 54% of all infants will be born in that region should current trends persist. And of course, current trends will not persist. They're going to keep going up, up, up until they hit the wall in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, as I was talking about last night, and I've been predicting for years, is going to be uh, the first domino to fall where we're going to see a huge uh, crash in the population of sub-Saharan Africa. There is no fucking way that 54% of all infants uh, in the year 2100 will be born in sub-Saharan Africa. The question is, will any humans be being born in 2100 in sub-Saharan Africa? The answer, will any infant chimpanzees, gorillas, elephants, lions, rhinos, hippos, giraffes, well, you get my point, by 2100, every single thing bigger than a mouse alive in sub-Saharan Africa will be extinct. And once the sub-Saharan African population has literally eaten every single one of their fellow earthlings, and cook them on charcoal from every last tree in the continent of Africa, then you're going to have what I call the Bill Gady uh, six mass extinction going on in Africa. Uh, this, this is a train wreck for anybody with a brain. But in, in the meantime, uh, you, you can believe that, uh, who was it, Noam Chomsky saying like five years ago what you're seeing, this exodus of sub-Saharan Africans getting their black asses to Honkyville is barely going to be a footnote in history in the year, uh, by the year 2050. Uh, that the uh, Europe will probably very well be more black than white uh, by the middle of this century. Quoting the uh, report, we are facing staggering social change through the 21st century, said senior author Stein Emil Volshit. The the world will be simultaneously tackling a baby boom in some countries and a baby bust in others, as most of the world contends with the challenges to the economic growth of a shrinking workforce and how to care for and pay for aging populations. Many of the most resource-limited countries in sub-Saharan Africa will be grappling with how to support the youngest, fastest growing populations on the planet in some of the most politically and economically unstable, heat-stressed, and health system-strained places on Earth. It ain't gonna happen. I can make this uh, my my Friday rant, but other than Sub-Saharan Africa, this this is obviously is the best news for the rest of the planet. This is how Euro news is. Uh, just quickly, it sounds a lot like UPI. Fertility rates will see dramatic decline with 97% of countries unable to sustain their unsustainable populations. An overwhelming 
majority of countries globally will not have high enough fertility rates to sustain, you, you know, their already ridiculously overpopulated, unsustainable population sizes by 2100, according to a newly, pub, to newly published research in The Lancet. The latest projections further highlight a dramatic decline in global fertility throughout this century that experts said has both, quote, potential pros and cons. Uh, the pros being that every time a human is not born, that one of our fellow Earthlings anywhere outside of Sub-Saharan Africa can breathe a sigh of relief. Okay, anywhere on this planet, if you are one of our fellow Earthlings, this is the greatest news on the planet. If you are, I don't know, I'm looking at a picture of a zebra for instance, if you are any sort of uh, large mammal, bird, or reptile in Sub-Saharan Africa, you just got a death sentence. Okay, uh, unless uh, by some miracle the population of Sub-Saharan Africa collapses before they cut down every single fucking tree on that continent to barbecue every one of their fellow earthlings. It's going to be one or the other. And of course, being a white male with a southern accent, uh, just by mentioning this obvious fact to, to anyone with a fourth grade math education uh, looking at the numbers on the table for what's happening in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, you're a racist, you're a eugenicist, whatever. So this next one uh, ha has so many layers uh, of, of irony in it that, uh, good God, uh, I, I mean, where do I begin? And this is actually Fox News doing a, a, a fairly intelligent, I, you know, every time I, I try to, uh, to parse out what the hell is going on in the Gulf of Maine, uh, Eric Hanna, would you please comment on your opinion of, of what you think is unfolding uh, in your back door? Local fishermen slam Biden administration's newly unveiled plans to industrialize the Gulf of Maine. So, uh, just so you do, just so you guys fully understand this, where, where the irony is, it is commercial fishermen in the Gulf of Maine that are the single biggest threat, not only to the fish and the lobsters in, uh, in, in the Gulf of Maine, but they are hands down the single biggest threat to whales. They are the, 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 just the amount of whales getting entangled uh, in, in their fishing lines, in their lobster traps. So you understand that these hypocritical sacks of shit commercial fishermen slamming Joe Biden's industrialization uh, of, the, uh, of the Gulf of Maine I, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of a, 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 an appropriate uh, metaphor for that. That would be, you, you, you know, that would be, what the hell, like a killer whale uh, complaining about a great white shark eating sperm whales, which we're going to talk about in a minute. 
it's killer whales versus uh, versus great white sharks. You, you gotta love it. These fucking planet eaters. These whale killing planet eaters uh, pointing the finger at each other when everybody is a fucking whale killing piece of shit. A group of fishing associations is sounding the alarm about new plans from the Biden administration to industrialize the Gulf of Maine by leasing two million acres of area for wind farm construction, a move that fishermen say will be detrimental to their business uh, and marine life. Uh, their business is the biggest detriment to marine life. So, uh, <laughs> who, who do you cheer on? Uh, do, we, do we cheer on uh, the, the planet saving Joe Biden uh, announcing that uh, I, I, I'm marking off two million acres to fuck with those goddamn fish killing, whale killing, lobster killing uh, sacks of shit uh, to put in my, you know, my fish killing, what, what, you know what I'm saying. Uh, last week, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, an agency within the Department of Interior, announced the finalization of what is known as a wind energy area, a WEA, which is an area of the ocean that would allot for construction of enough wind turbines to produce 32 gigawatts of power, whatever uh, that means. Uh, but a coalition of 17 fishing associations say the move is, quote, the culmination of a rushed development process that is poorly informed on economic, scientific, environmental, and cultural issues of paramount uh, it, it, importance of anybody should know uh, a, about being poorly informed on the econ well at least scientific and environmental issues it would be a coalition of 17 commercial fishing associations uh, and, and, and the Gulf of Maine uh, you gotta love the names of some of these fucking planet eaters the groups which include the New England Fishermen's Stewardship, oh, Fishermen's Stewardship Association, and the Responsible Offshore Development Alliance said, quote, serious questions remain about how offshore wind activity is connected to spikes in whale mortality throughout the Atlantic Ocean. Anyway, I'm going to weigh in on this unadulterated horseshit right wing. I, I am no fan uh, of offshore energy development on any way, shape, or form. But uh, compared to these motherfucking uh, commercial fishermen and more importantly cargo ships, uh, the, the development of these wind uh, turbines, uh, one of the few things they don't endanger are, are whales. Uh, that the, 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 these goddamn fishermen and a, a lot more importantly cargo ships are, uh, are, are, are to blame for whale deaths. I have never seen one iota of evidence uh, telling me that I, I, I would like to see the evidence. I don't, I don't need the fucking evidence of, of the whales 
uh, to be against this offshore wind. There, there's, uh, there's plenty of reasons to be against this. This whole fucking right-wing conspiracy theory, you know, suddenly all of these right-wing planet eaters are so goddamn concerned uh, about whales. It is uh, because they don't want uh, offshore wind competing with offshore oil and gas. The offshore oil and gas industry has killed, will continue to kill more whales than offshore wind energy ever has, ever will. This is in no way, shape, or form condoning offshore wind energy. Get the fucking windmills out of the oceans. Get the fucking oil and gas industry out of the oceans. Get the fucking cargo ships out of the oceans. And get those motherfucking commercial fishermen out of the, uh, out of the Gulf of Maine and the ocean. And stop eating seafood. But, uh... We got one more story can't resist. We have some good news about sperm whales. Uh, good news about sperm whales. Not know if this is good news for the orcas or not. From live science, sperm whales drop giant poop bombs to save themselves from orca attack. Sperm whales blasted a big dark bubble of poop to prevent an impending orca attack off the southern coast of Western Australia, scientists witnessed a clever defense strategy unfold Tuesday, March 19th during a tourist excursion in Bremer Canyon. Uh, they described seeing a cloud of diarrhea permeate the water and this rarely seen defense mechanism seemed to help the sperm whale pod escape what could have been a fatal attack by at least 30 killer whales. Um, according to one of these, uh, Jenna Tucker, a, a, a poop bomb researcher, quote, it's called defense defecation. Defense defecation. Jenna Tucker, a marine biologist uh, who was on the boat, said, when the animals defecate, they pass their huge tails through their poop to drive away or confuse attackers. Uh, as the event unfolded, onlookers noticed a large dark bubble pop up to the water surface. At first they thought it was blood from one of the whales, potentially a small calf, but when the team later reviewed footage of the plume, they realized it was actually whale poop. Yes. In this demonstration of defense defecation, the pod formed a circle with their heads together and their, you, you know, their assholes at the out of the circle and the whales fanned their tails in unison, forcing their diarrhea toward the unsuspecting orcas, said Tucker. This is called a rosette, another defense mechanism they use when they are under attack. So maybe uh, we have a new defense mechanism here in the collapse. You, you know, when your next door neighbor comes for your last can of beanie weenies, what you need to do is get together with your family. All of you stick your head in together, your asses out, and fire diarrhea bombs. Uh, at your next door neighbor to protect your last can of beanie weenies. 
But anyway, uh, that's about it for the good news on uh, on this planet this week. But uh, long live the good news of uh, at least uh, the decline of honkies. One less honky on this planet is uh, is a good thing. Bye, guys.